there well actually this is this is going to feel very much like being an octopus today because here I'm going to show you what's been going on behind the scenes so you can see all of the reasons why I've been making the decisions that I've been doing with all the various levels and you'll be able to see what really happened yesterday as well so um, yeah it should be really interesting but as, as will become clear there's a lot more going on on these computers than there has been for the last uh, well, yeah, for a long time. And and actually, I've got some big pieces of software all going at the same time. So hopefully we'll get through to the end. But uh, you're going to see all sorts of things. And hopefully it'll inform, well, it'll inform what, what I've been doing and what's, you know, what, uh, yeah, why. Certainly yesterday that there were various bits that, that were very loud. And we'll see how loud they were and also we'll see what the I've got to work around and we'll see how it uh, how it works at the end of this video when I've had a look <laughs> right okay what we'll do is I've added a new screen today and there it is and you can see on that uh, three bits of software if you include me um, then you could say it was four bits of software but let me just quickly go round and I need to go on here because they're all on different screens and uh, spatial awareness so here we've got Ableton which has got all of the pieces that uh, that we've been doing over the last three months and then next to it we have another piece of software which is called uh, oh, ScreenFlow and and it's one that I use once I've made the live recording. I I then take the 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 video and I import it into into ScreenFlow, and uh, and then I then chop bits up, or chop the ends off so that it makes the right is the right length, and and then I package it up and then post it onto YouTube and Instagram. Now, when we do that, that's when I can see what the levels of audio are. And that's been something that I've been talking about for the last couple of days. And I've been sort of wanting to borrow your ears so that you can let me know what the level sounded like and what, what you would recommend. And actually, I've had some really fantastic, fantastic feedback, which I'm, which I'm really grateful for. Uh, and we'll see. And I think I think we're getting we're getting there. Um, and I'd like to do a big shout out for Case Music. That's K-A-C-E Music, one word. Uh, do check out his site on on YouTube. Uh, he's been really helpful with setting the levels. And let's see. Let's see how this works. And then we'll uh, we'll see how it develops as well. But right, let's have a quick look at these. Right, so we've got all of these pieces. If we go into this program here, this is ScreenFlow. At the bottom here, on here, you can see OBS. So that's the level of my voice, which I've got now. And I've, I've brought the level down. I've changed a couple of the settings. So hopefully it's going to be very near to what the music is going to be now as well. So next to it, we've got sc screen flow. And here we have a yesterday's video or the day before yesterday's video and then this was yesterday's video and you can see here we were playing with volumes and then here in particular and I'm big circle around that uh, that was where it became extremely loud and and that's where all the levels and we got clipping and you could hear the crackling 
going on. And it was that that I was really trying to, I've been trying to avoid. But one of the other things that I've become very aware of is the fact that the rest of the levels and the rest of the music is all very low. And actually my voice, my voice is very low too. So what I'm wanting to do is bring bring up the voice, bring down the music, but also keep that uh, volume uh, or keep the dynamics of the music as well. And that's 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 my my holy grail is want to really get a get a grip <laughs> of of the dynamics so that you can really. F well, what you need is command over every dynamic. Uh, was it last year? I wrote a piece and I wanted to see if I could go from well the quietest you can write music is six p's and the loudest you can write is four f's and so you've got 12 dynamics and you've got mf and mp in the middle and uh, what i wanted to do was go from six p's right the way up to four f's and and see how i could mix and master that and that was a real challenge and i'm not sure i'm not sure i cracked it but it it brought out it gave me all sorts of uh, all sorts of problems because i wanted you to hear the 6 p's but if i turned the volume up for that then i had to you know it meant that the 4 f's was really loud but what i didn't want to do was bring it all into a nice sort of middle middle ground and that that's something else that's something that i'm really wanting to investigate because actually what you really need to be able to do is is be master of that that huge dynamic range um i'm not sure I'm not sure how to do that yet but but uh, that that's 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 the destination i think or one of the destinations <laughs> anyway let's have a look so we've got all of these pieces here and what i want to do is show you what i've got here so let's have a listen to the volumes. Let's have a listen to the piece we've just heard. And that's at the beginning here. We need to ignite that and then you should be able to hear this. And I think that that sounds that sounds pretty good from where I am. Now, the interesting thing that, you know, because actually this is it's, it's all being set set up very differently from how it normally is. Ableton, instead of using a driver that then goes straight into OBS, is now going through another piece of software, which I talked about the other day. It's now going through Sonarworks, which was this this piece of software um, and because and the reason for that is because I had to use with ScreenFlow that audio is going through Sonarworks as well so I then had to set up another fader within OBS that could then control the volume of both of these bits of software um, <laughs> what I've also done is I've I've disabled sonar works as well because if i if i enable it and i'll do that now you'll see that all of those profiles come on and that means that i can hear it really well through my headphones because that's what it's set up for but it means that it won't necessarily sound how it should do for you so i'm sacrificing what i can hear in order for you to be able to hear it how i think <laughs> you should be hearing it and and there you go you see now this is where the the mental gymnastics of trying to predict what is being received on the other end is 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 bit that that's what's been ex exercising my my poor little brain over the last few over the last few days Right. OK, so let's have a look at this. Um, so this was the day before yesterday. And as I say, in fact, you'll be able to tell which one of me is real <laughs> for the purposes of this video is I'm the one with the pink shirt. 
Okay, so let's have a listen to this and we can have a look at the levels on here as well. Those sorts of skills that I'm trying to bring together. And of course, uh, that's that's something I'm I'm sort of wanting to learn about because it's I've done the, the music mixing and you can see that actually because this is now going through the Sonarworks driver, it's now going into the audio on that side instead of my voice, my, my audio Vox version. So it's going to be really interesting to see how those two marry up going forward. But you can see looking at this, these this wave profile, the wave, the audio wave is quite low. It's all about, I don't know, sort of 25%. There's a few peaks here. That one goes up to about 50 but I think that's music. But most of the audio is all quite sort of 25% in the range. And what I'd quite like to do is bring that up, but also maintain the dynamics. OK, so what we did yesterday and uh, what I is I'd been playing. So some of the audio, some of the voice is a little bit louder already. But let's just have a listen to this days ago. And, and that was done on a K minus 14 and that's the standard for posting to sound. okay and let's see if we can find some music yeah 10 db and that's, and that's the, the second one with fs So that was a quiet version. Let's just have a listen to this because this is this is how it can go wrong. OK, so <laughs> get ready. And you can see that it's hitting the buffers all the way around and you can see all those red, all those red things, um, all the red lights flashing. <laughs> uh, now, so that's all on based on that's that's yesterday's recording. And that is quite right, rightfully uh, setting all the alarms going. Let's now listen to that piece. With the new settings and see how it works how it works now. So we're going to listen to that piece again and then uh, and then see see how it works. So this is set up with um I've got minus 5 dB um set and it's on K20. So let's have a look. Now that's going to be really interesting to see what that looks like when it gets imported into ScreenFlow later on. Because actually, although it was going into the red and it was, it was quite loud. I want it, I want it to be loud, but I don't want it to be too loud. And it'd be really interesting to see if it's if it's actually hitting the buffers. Because I put a limiter in there as well, which should which should protect the whole thing. Uh, let's see, let's see. So this is the next in the next part of the journey. I think tomorrow, hopefully, we'll have got an answer. I'm I'm wondering whether or not because I'm having to change lots of 
sort of bits of software that I use all the time with fixed settings. And the reason they're fixed settings is so that I can actually look at something and be able to, uh, well, be able to compare and make sure it sounds it sounds the same and sounds right. Uh, what I'm wondering is whether or not there's a way that I can actually set behind the scenes, set everything up so that it's it's all there and I just have to press a button and it's already sorted. That's that's my next quest. I think there is a piece of software uh, by Rogue Amiga that I'm going to be investigating and we'll see we'll see how that goes. Anyway, I think we'll um, we'll finish today and we'll see how it uh, how it how it goes uh, from from then on. So thank you very much for watching and uh, take care. We'll see you tomorrow.